Hey, do you ever experience excruciating emotional distress after finishing watching one of your favorite TV series? Like, it's some sort of breaking up with someone you actually have a relationship with? I know I do. The good news is that you are not alone. Practically everyone in the modern world has gone through something similar at some point in their lives. The question is, what the heck is that? And uh, is this kind of behavior unhealthy? Let's find out what people also ask. Hi, I'm Xiao Shei Lo. Welcome to What People Also Ask, where I search something seemingly obvious and share with you some of its part, aka People Also Ask, which is a feature telling you what other people are searching on Google that relate to your query. Today's keyword is parasocial relationship. We will discuss what it is and some relevant research about it. So let's start with our first part, who created the term parasocial relationships and what is it? The question is answered by an article titled, Wait, what the heck is a parasocial relationship? published by Huff Post and another article titled Parasocial Relationships, Definition, Examples, and Key Study published by Salt Co., which is an educational website owned by Dot Dash, an American digital media company that publishes articles and videos about a variety of subjects including health, food, science, uh, technology, finance, beauty, lifestyle, travel, and education. According to this two article in 1956, Social scientists Donald Horton and Richard Holt first found an interesting phenomenon occurring among the increasingly TV-obsessed American public, which they called it parasocial relationship or the illusion of a face-to-face -face relationship. Holt and Horton were particularly interested in researching viewers' interaction with TV news anchors. However, television or movie characters, ra radio personality, or even a favorite book character may all produce this kind of, as whole and Horton put it, intimacy at a distance. And since then, communication researchers have been using the term parasocial relationship and parasocial interaction interchangeably. However, recently many researchers think these two terms should actually be used to describe two different things. So what is the difference between parasocial interaction and parasocial relationship? The question is again answered by the aforementioned Salt Coat article. According to Salt Coat, a parasocial interaction occurs when a media consumer believes they are interacting with a media figure during a discrete one-side viewing or listening experience. It can be with a celebrity, fictional character, radio host, or even a puppet. A parasocial relationship, on the other hand, is when a media user imagines a long-term tie with a media character that go beyond the viewing or listening situation. Understanding the differences between these two concepts is very important when you are trying to analyze and measure these two phenomena. For example, a study titled Parasocial Interaction and Parasocial Relationship, Conceptual Clarification and Critical Assessment of Measures, published in Human Communication Research in 2016, found that the commonly used dual code parasocial interaction scale, aka PSI scale, might not measure parasocial interaction as accurately as another dual code experience of parasocial interaction scale, aka EPSI scale. Because the former doesn't seem to make a clear distinction between parasocial interaction and parasocial relationships. So, are parasocial relationships healthy? This question is answered by an article titled, Wait, what the heck is a parasocial relationship? Published by HuffPost and another article titled, Twitter is buzzing about parasocial relationships, are they unhealthy? Published by Today.com. These two articles both argue that parasocial relationships, on the whole, are almost entirely beneficial. One study titled, Parasocial Interaction and Relationships in Early Adolescence, published in Journal Frontier in Psychology in 2016, has shown that parasocial relationships can help young people figure out their identity and explore what kind of person they want to be and what kind of relationships they want to be in. Another research titled Parasocial Relationships and Self-Discrepancy, Fox Relationships has benefit for low self-esteem individuals, published in the journal Personal Relationships, found that people with low self-esteem might use parasocial relationships to see themselves more positively, much like people with high self-esteem do with their real social relationships. As J.L. Derrick, the author of the research and associate professor of psychology at the University of Houston, put it, a parasocial relationship is safe. Your favorite celebrity cannot reach out to a magazine article to reject you. This has changed somewhat as social media has developed, but it's still rare. 
I also found another very interesting new study titled Parasocial Interaction, the COVID-19 Quarantine and Digital Age Media, published in the journal Human Arena in 2020, say that parasocial interaction might even help cope with loneliness during COVID-19 quarantine. Both articles, however, suggested that parasocial relationships can sometimes go away. So, how do you know if you are in an unhealthy parasocial relationship? The question is answered by an article titled, Do you have a celeb BFF you have never met? You may be in a parasocial relationship, published by The Greatest, which is a fitness, health, and happiness internet media startup targeting 18 to 35 years old audiences. This article is medically reviewed by Dr. Timothy Legg, which is a certified psychiatry mental health nurse practitioner and licensed psychologist. In this article, Natalie Jun, a licensed therapist of Skylight Counseling in Chicago, recommends first examining your social media content and then further examining how much time and emotional investment you are putting into your parasocial relationships. Ask yourself four questions. 1. How much of my time am I pulling into this relationship and what is the energy behind it? 2. Am I distraught when things happen to this person? Three. Do I get upset when others criticize this person? 4. What fantasy do I have about this relationship? Once you have asked yourself this question, some obvious red flag might appear immediately. Or it might take time for this realization to come to light. For example, if your ability to work is impaired, is an obvious red flag, then you might need a parasocial breakup. So what is a parasocial breakup? The answer to this question is answered by a research published in the Journal of Broadcasting Electronic Media in 2010 titled When Good Friends Say Goodbyes, a Parasocial Breakup Study. The author of the study, Karen L. and Jonathan Cohen, defined parasocial breakup as a situation where a character with whom a viewer has developed a parasocial relationship go off the air. In this study, 279 students complete surveys after a final episode of the television show Friends aired, examining their viewing patterns, sentiments about the show and their favorite character and loneliness. This study found that after a parasocial breakup, media consumers experience distress similar to that of a social relationship breakup. However, the emotional distress experienced after parasocial breakup was less severe than that experienced following a real-life breakup. So how to deal with a parasocial breakup? This question is answered by an article titled Breaking up is hard to do, even when it's with a fictional character published by Post Psychotherapy, which appears to be a personal website of a psychotherapist Ashley Meir. According to this article, it's not weird to feel sad when you have to break up with someone you are having a parasocial relationship with. As we mentioned, it is actually very common. And if you found your parasocial breakup is getting too hard and start affecting your daily life, you should focus on self compassion and working on letting go self criticism and self judgment about having feelings. And if you need, find a therapist who won't judge your situation. Today we learned what are parasocial relationships, parasocial interactions, how to know if you are in a healthy one, and how to deal with parasocial breakups. If you made it to the end of the video, chances are that you enjoy learning what people also ask on Google. But let's face it, reading PA yourself will be a pain. So here's the deal, I will do the reading for you and upload a video compiling some fun PAA once a week. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss any PAA report that I compile. So just do it now. Bye!